Hello and shalom to my brothers and sisters in Messiah Yeshua who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Brother Nick here and today is the 17th day of the 11th month. It is February 3rd, 2022 and this video is being broadcasted and published from New Cairo, Egypt. And this video is the year of Jubilee in the book of Revelation. And it is also the 70th year of Jubilee in the book of Revelation. So pause the video and get a pen and paper because you need to take notes because the information in this video, just like the last couple, is too important not to understand what is going on in the times we are in. So in my previous two videos, I actually restored the Jubilee count based on Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1, which is the key verse that unlocks the Jubilee count because it anchors the Jubilee year to 14 years after the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem, which historians date around 587 BC or 586 BC. The scholars are almost 50-50 on what year it is. So if you have not watched these two videos, part one and then part two, you need to watch them. And if you've watched these videos, then I highly recommend you watch them again a second or a third time. It's too important to not understand this new information as it comes out. In these videos, I explain that Daniel's prophecy of Daniel 9.24 is to be 70 jubilees of the real Israelites and not 70 weeks. So what you're looking at is the correct interpretation of Daniel 9.24. 70 jubilees, not 70 weeks, are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to do what? To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So as you can see here, to make atonement, atonement is made on the day of atonement, and it's not 70 weeks, but 70 jubilees. And on the year of jubilee, that's when the jubilee trump is sounded, and this is when atonement is going to be made for all Israel, and when the first resurrection is going to happen. I also explain in these videos that when Messiah Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 18, verses 22 to 23, he said to Peter to forgive 70 times 7, as all the English translations have it as 7, it is really 70 times jubilees, 70 jubilees. And it is the same 70 jubilees that Daniel prophesied of in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, that I just went over there with you. So look, watch these videos because I explain how to interpret the word Shabuim as seven as a jubilee. So it's speaking of 70 jubilees. So watch these two videos. Understanding this is the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And as I've explained, the keys to the kingdom of heaven is knowing when the kingdom of heaven is going to come to earth. We should all understand this because Master Messiah Yeshua taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what we are praying in that first part of that prayer is to pray for his kingdom to come. To come where? To come from heaven to earth. Because uh, we're praying for his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So we're praying for his kingdom to come. It's the kingdom of Eloah, the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. You need to know when it's going to be and when it's going to happen and what's going to happen. That's going to be the first resurrection. And it's going to happen on a 70th Jubilee for real Israel. So you need to watch these two videos or and watch them again and take notes and test what I'm sharing with you. As I said, the 70th Jubilee is going to be when the redemption of Israel is going to happen. All Israel is going to be saved. Whoever made it through the tribulation is going to be saved. And whoever died during the tribulation is going to be resurrected. Then the rapture is going to happen upon that. Now, I do believe possibly, 
I understand that there could be and is likely an escape from all these things that are coming come on the face of the earth. But that is not the rapture resurrection. The rapper, rapture resurrection event is going to happen on the, on the last trump, and it's the trump of Jubilee, as I've been explaining throughout this series and in other past videos. And it's going to be the first resurrection of all the righteous saints and the body of Messiah. That's when it's going to happen, on the 70th Jubilee. So hallelujah. And because scholars are unsure and uncertain of the year when the Babylonians destroyed the temple and Jerusalem, either 587 and 586 BC, of those two dates, I provided two years for when the next Jubilee is going to be, which is also the 70th Jubilee. As I said in those videos, I narrowed it down to two possible years for the next Jubilee, year of Jubilee, which is also the 70th year of Jubilee from when the Israelites entered into the Promised Land. And based on these two dates of the destruction of Jerusalem, this is when the next and 70th Jubilee is going to be, I said. Either Yom Kippur 2024 or Yom Kippur 2025. And as I said in my previous video, this one right here, I narrowed down the next and 70th Jubilee to two possible years. But I also provided two end-time tribulation scenarios as I will now replay the clip of that section in the video right now. I'm going to re replay that video clip because I just recently identified the year of Jubilee in the book of Revelation, which I will share the location and based on the location of the Jubilee year in the book of Revelation, I can now eliminate one of the two possible years of Jubilee based on the end time scenario and refine it to one. And I say this with certainty, if our Gregorian year 2022 and Julian year 2775 be correct. So here is the clip. So as I said, of the only two possible years for the next and 70th Jubilee, these two, okay, there's only a couple of scenarios that possibly can happen. So again, we are right here. This is 2022, it's what, January 23rd. So we're like right here. And of this scenario of a 2024, fall right here, 2025, based on a 587 BC destruction of Jerusalem, there's not a lot of time, there's not three and a half years, there's less than three years until the 70th Jubilee. So you can't even fit, not let alone a seven year period, you can't even get a three and a half year period in, in this time period, three and a half year tribulation prior to making an end of sin and bringing everlasting righteousness and sealing up the vision and anointing the most holy under this time period of a 2024 to 2025 Jubilee scenario, there's not enough time for the 1,260 days, which is 42 months, which is also three and a half years, to happen. Now, based on a 2025 start to the 70th Jubilee year, right here, from Yom Kippur 2025 through Yom Teruah 2026, that Jubilee year would be be based on a 586 BC destruction of Jerusalem. And we are here. We are right after year 2022. It's January. It just happened. And under this scenario, if, if it's out here, we have actually three and a half years. One year, two year, three year, plus a half year, which means that a, the three and a half year tribulation will start would start if there is a three and a half year tribulation, which is what I lean to, 1,260 days in the wilderness or a 42 month tribulation, it would happen in spring of 2022. So under this circum scenario right here, it has enough, it will allow enough time for a 1,260 day flight into the wilderness and a 1,260 days uh, preaching of the two witnesses that they're going to start right here in spring 2022. Possibly the spring equinox, maybe the 10th day of the first month, maybe on Passover, the night of Passover as well. 
So that's how I see the possible situation of the 70th Jubilee to start here of 2025. This kind of makes me, I'm more comfortable with this, that it's not going to just be status quo going into the 70th Jubilee, that the 1,260 days or the 42 months or the three and a half years have to happen prior to, to make an end of sins, okay, to bring in everlasting righteousness and remind you that this is all determined upon the holy city. And the holy city has to be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles for that last three and a half years, the 1,260 days that they get to trample the holy city to finish the transgression of the holy city to make an end of sins and to make atonement for iniquity, that's for Israel, to bring in everlasting righteousness, that's the messianic age, to seal up the vision and prophecy, that means all the prophecies we had that, that, have, that were prophesied before were now completed and sealed up, they're completed, and then also to anoint the most holy. So that is Daniel 9.24, and that's upon thy people and upon thy holy city, Jerusalem. So the Gentiles have to trample Jerusalem, I understand, for 42 months, which is for 1,260 days, and then the finishing of the transgression and making an end of the sins, and then making atonement for iniquity will happen, which happens here on the 70th Jubilee on Yom Kippur. So that means that the city is going to be trampled down for 1,260 days. So there's a lot that looks like it has to happen. I don't understand completely on how it's going to fit in this complete scenario, but this is how I currently understand it at this moment. And the 70 Jubilees is the correct interpretation to make an end of sins. So now that I played that clip with you from my previous video, and I went over the two end time scenarios for the possible two dates of the year of Jubilee, now let me share with you the location and identify the year of Jubilee in the book of Revelation. The year of Jubilee happens on the seventh trumpet judgment. And I will go through all the identifiers that are in the seventh trumpet, which happens on Yom Kippur of the Jubilee year. And once I do so, I will then go to the previous text before it, and look at the previous text before the seventh trumpet and explain how it matches the three, the end time three and a half year tribulation scenario in the clip that I just played. Thus, it's going to eliminate the 2024 year of Jubilee and it's going to confirm a 2025 year of Jubilee in, if our Gregorian year 222 and Julian year 2000. 775 be correct. This means that the three and a half year pre-Jubilee tribulation is going to start in spring 2022. And dates for that possible start, possibly the spring equinox, possibly the first day of the first month, possibly the sixth day of the first month, the 10th day of the first month or the 14th day of the first month. And spoiler alert for a video that I'm going to be working on. Spoiler alert, war and the beginning of sorrows could start its progression on the first day of the 12th month, just a couple of weeks from now, which I hope to be publishing a video on by next week. So now let's go ahead and let me show you where the year of Jubilee is in the book of Revelation. So here I am in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, KJV version, for the sake of doing this presentation, because it has the Greek concordance if we need it. The seventh trumpet, I'm at the verse 15, which is the seventh trumpet. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty-four elders, which sat before Elohim on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, We give thanks, O Yahweh El Shaddai, 
which art and which was and which art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of Eloah was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, the ark of the covenant, the ark of the testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So here I highlighted some things that I want to go over with you. The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah. We are to pray, let his kingdom come and his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That is when the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Eloah is going to come to earth. Okay, and that is going to happen here at the seventh trump. And we can see also at the same time that his wrath is come. His wrath is come on this day on the seventh trump. And it is the time of the dead, as you see right here, that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give the reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great. This is the first resurrection. They're going to get their reward, which is their resurrected bodies. Hallelujah. And then it says, and then, and thou shouldest, so future tense, destroy them which destroy the earth. So his wrath has come, and he's going to destroy them which destroy the earth. So let me put that in red, because that goes with his wrath coming. And we see the temple of Eloah was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. And this is in the theme of Yom Kippur. The ark of the covenant, the holy, the high priest would have to go into the holy of holies once a year and see the ark of the covenant. And he would have to sprinkle blood on, on there. And when it was open, heaven is open, the holy place, he goes into the holy of holies was where the temple of the ark in his testament is was seen and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail so after that we see this great hail and this great hail should probably be read because it has to do with the coming it with the wrath that is now happening at this stage of the seventh trumpet we will all agree that this right here is a type of yom kippur right right here of the temple and the ark of his testament being seen in heaven now there's more to this that i'll go ahead and share upon so here i am in revelation 15 it appears that that wrath at the time of the seventh trumpet is going to be the seven plagues from the seven bowl and vile judgments revelation 15 verse 5 and after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. So that matches just what we read in Revelation chapter 11. So the bold judgments are picking up right at the seventh trumpet of chapter 11. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden bowls or vials, full of the wrath of Elohim. So the wrath of Elohim, as I just read, that should probably be red. So that's highlighted red because it's the wrath of Elohim. This matches up with Revelation chapter 11 at the end. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come. So that matches, this theme also matches Revelation 15 of Elohim who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of Elohim and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So they might be in heaven, but they're not in the temple in heaven. Okay. And so what is interesting regarding this, as I shared with you, uh, smoke in the temple where the ark is seen in Revelation chapter 11, smoke in that area is what we see that the high priest has to do 
on Yom Kippur. He has to offer incense and smoke. So this is another indicator that the seventh trumpet and these bowl judgments are happening on Yom Kippur. And on Yom Kippur is when the Jubilee horn is blown, which is the trumpet. So that's another theme. But going back, we see the wrath of Elohim. So this matches with Revelation chapter 11. So as I just shared, in the seventh trumpet, the wrath is come. And as I just read in Revelation 15, that the seven vials or the seven bowls that the angels pour out on the earth is the wrath of Elohim. And we see great hail right here. And here I am in Revelation 11, and this last verse, verse 19, is very interesting. Because look at the pattern at, that we see. Okay, We see the temple is open, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So I highlighted it orange, then purple, and then red for the hail. So orange for the lightnings, voices, thunderings, and then I highlighted it purple for an earthquake, and I highlighted it red for great hail. And this sequence matches at the seventh bowl or vial or the seventh plague of the bowl judgments in Revelation chapter 16. Here is the seventh bowl of wrath. And the seventh angel poured out his vial or his bowl into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as men had not seen, seen since upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great, and this great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before Eloah to give unto her the cup of the wine of his fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, and every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed Eloah because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. So again, look at this, uh, look at the order here. And let me go ahead, because it's coming out of, out of the temple of heaven, let me go ahead and highlight that gray. So we have the out of the temple of heaven. Then we see voices and thunders and lightnings. And then there was a great earthquake and then great hail. So gray, orange, purple, red. And this is Revelation chapter 16. Now let me go back to Revelation chapter 11. And here I am in Revelation chapter 11. And we can see that the temple of Eloah was open in heaven. So gray. And there were lightnings, voices and thunderings, orange and an earthquake in great hail. So this seventh trumpet matches up with the seventh bowl. So these bowl judgments are happening when the seventh trumpet happens, and the seventh trumpet happens on Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur is a jubilee, and this is a jubilee theme, and in three and a half years from now is going to be the 70th jubilee uh, per Daniel 9.24 and Matthew 18.22-23. I've established some themes of Yom Kippur here at the seventh trump and also at the beginning of the wrath. Okay, the seventh trump, which is the wrath is come, and he's going to destroy them, would destroy the earth, and it's going to be with great hail. So now that I've shared the seventh trumpet, like I said, I'm going to give an explanation for the text before it to explain why uh, the there is a three and a half year. 42 month, 1,260 days that happens previously to the seventh trumpet and the wrath being poured out, which happens on Yom Kippur, which is the day of the resurrection. And it's going to actually possibly be a full year during that year of Jubilee. It looks like that this wrath is going to be poured out. I don't know if it's going to be, maybe, maybe it'll be just over 20 days between, or Maybe it'll, the wrath will be done from, the wrath will be, it might be quick because it says the third row will cometh quickly. It might be finished quick. And I'm going to go ahead and get into that as Yom Kippur is on the 10th day of the seventh month. So if this is when the bowl, the vile judgments, the bowl judgments happen, 
on the 10th day of the seventh month, which is on the day of Jubilee, if that's when it begins, then if you have 10 days, the 15th day is the beginning of tabernacles, that's five days, and then it goes seven days, and then you have the extra day. So that's like the great eighth day, which is on the 24th day, the 23rd day of the seventh month. So that might be enough time for the river Euphrates to dry out and for the kings of the east to come over for that war at the end, possibly. So let me go ahead and now look at Revelation chapter 11, which is the two witnesses. So here I am back in Revelation chapter 11. And here is what I read earlier about the seventh trump, starting at verse 15. Now, before the seventh trump, you would expect to see the sixth trump, but instead we have like a interlude or some other text that's put here. And this has perplexed a lot of people. This is regarding the two witnesses and their ministry. And I'm going to come back to this, but first I want to go ahead and show you how in Revelation chapter 10, we see the angel and the small scroll, and this is the beginning of John's ministry because he's told that thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And before that, we have the sixth trump in chapter 9. I'm going backwards. And here I am in chapter 9, and we have the fifth trump and the sixth trump. And before that, in chapter 8, we have the first four trumps. So at the seventh seal, we have the first four trumps. Then we have the fifth trump and the sixth trump. And then in the next chapter, or the next part of the, 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 the book of Revelation, we have the angel in the small scroll. And this is all setting up for John that he must prophesy again to many peoples, nations, and tongues. And a lot of people think, okay, halfway through the tribulation period, three first three years is this peace treaty. This is how typical... Christianity has interpreted the end times for such a long time. The Antichrist makes a peace treaty at the beginning of the seven years, and then for the first three and a half years, there's peace treaty, and then he breaks it, and sets up the abomination of desolation, and then the two witnesses happen, and it's 1,260 days in the end. That's like the typical end time scenario, end times interpretation, but it's incorrect. So back to Revelation 10, before I move on to Revelation 11, but regarding Revelation 10, it's important to note that John must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. He's going to be one of the two witnesses. The other second witness is going to be, I understand it to be Daniel the prophet. They both had the insight into the 42 months, uh, the 1,260 days, the three and a half years, times, times, and a half a time. Okay, that's what they had understanding of. So I understand them to be the two witnesses. I have a complete playlist on that. So now I get to Revelation chapter 11, and we're now in, it's going to give us the two witnesses and their ministry. And there's some important information for you to understand. I'm going to start here in verse 1. And there was given unto me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Elohim, and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty-two months. So just as I said in my video that Daniel 9.24, the prophecy of Daniel chapter 9.24, 70 jubilees are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So as I shared, that Daniel's prophecy was not just on the people, but also on the holy city. So the holy city is going to be tread for 42 months. So given Daniel 9.24, the 42 months has to happen before the 70th jubilee of Yom Kippur. Because the, the, they, they're, they have to tread it for 42 months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth and biblical sackcloth it can be it can be burlap but it's going to be black goat's hair that's how i understand Jan daniel and john to be prophesying wearing black goat's hair because the black has to do with mourning and it's the time of jacob's trouble it's going to be 
the sorrows are going to be on the earth and they're going to prophesy 1260 days which is equivalent to 42 months and these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Eloa of the earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, and their testimony, guys, is 1,260 days, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where our master was crucified. So I share with you guys the location where I believe in Jerusalem where their bodies are going to be in a video from a couple of years ago. But what I want to say is, is that they're prophesying in the holy city, in Jerusalem, the great city. And what is going to happen is the beast is going to kill them and make war with them. So for that to happen, that means that the city is still being tread underfoot for their 42 months. So 42 biblical months on the Enoch solar calendar, Yahweh Elohim's only calendar, a month is always 30 days. And there's prophetic days, there's prophetic months. So 1,260 days is three and a half years because you don't count the intercalary days of the season and you don't also count the days of the sun. I've explained how to count the prophetic calendar that's 360 days, okay? The calendar is 364 days, a solar cycle is 365.25 days, and the prophetic calendar is 360 days, and they're all running on the same time period, but you just don't reckon days. So like I I'll break it down for you again. Watch the video actually, because I explain it perfectly in there, and I give you all the details for that. But 42 months and 1,260 days is roughly about the same time period because the city is still being trampled underfoot at this time period when they die. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies there three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth okay so we see that there are two prophets daniel was a prophet and john was a prophet john the revelator was a prophet we're reading his prophecy right now and he was told in this prophecy that he was going to have to prophesy again and be and have a testimony again before many people's nations tongues and we see what do you see all and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. And again, in Revelation chapter 10, John was said he must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. What don't you get, guys? John the Revelator is one of the two witnesses. Because look, okay, like I just shared with you, I just made that connection right there. I can put it in red for you guys so you guys can see that again, that John is one of the two witnesses. Witnesses, the people and kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay. I put that in red. I go back to chapter 10. And he said unto me, unto John the Revelator, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Okay. So that is it. John is one of the two witnesses. He actually sees himself prophesying again in this prophecy. He actually sees his own death, which is, which is pretty incredible. But he also sees his resurrection. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies, the two witnesses' bodies, three and a half days, and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets two prophets daniel and john both prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth and after three and a half days the spirit of life of elohim entered into them and they stood upon their feet 
and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, okay, maybe that sound of the archangel, right, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they sent it up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And at that same hour, okay, at that same hour, there was, okay, so at that same hour, I'm just going to highlight that real quick. At that same hour, was there a great earthquake? And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the Aloha of heaven. Okay? Maybe to the Allah of heaven, because Allah and Aloha, Aloha are all the same word. But they, but Islam identifies Allah as their God, which has other roots than the Elohim, the Elohim of heaven, the Aloha of heaven, who is the Aloha of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So now we get the seventh trump, which I already read previously. So what is the purpose? of this placement of Revelation chapter 10 and 11, almost like an interlude regarding John's ministry and John's calling to be one of the two witnesses that he has to prophesy again, and then the two witnesses and the witnesses killed and raised. So what is the purpose of this being here in the, between the sixth and the seventh seal? Bible scholars say that, um, Bible scholars say that it's because it's gonna have to happen midway through, and it probably will happen midway through, not through the seals. So I am going to present and propose to you that this connection, one of the bookends is connected. This, this text could uh, of chapter 10 and 11 could probably be placed at the beginning of the tribulation, but it also can be placed here at the end, and I suggest that if we read it backwards from the seventh trump in here, if, if we go backwards from the seventh trump up, as we work our way back through this prophecy, that the end of their death, when they're resurrected, this time period, when they're, the spirit of life enters into them, okay, which is uh, the judgment that we read about of the priests in the, of the 70th Jubilee, where I read to you in, where the uh, right here at the time of the the time of the dead that they should be judged and they should be give us their reward unto the servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear the name small and great. So when the on Yom Kippur or the, or the jubilee year is when this is going to happen, which is the resurrection, because the reward that they get is their resurrected bodies. What you just saw there when Daniel and John, when the two witnesses who I understand Daniel and John, definitely John, are resurrected. Okay, they are getting their reward to the servants, the prophets. The dead in Christ get to rise first. It looks like Daniel and John possibly might be the first two to rise. It doesn't give us the other information that we see the resurrection here, but we see a resurrection and it's unto the servants, the prophets. The prophets and the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great. So it doesn't make any other sense for Daniel and John, the servants, the prophets, because there's other prophets that get their reward into the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great. And notice small is even before the great. So this is the resurrection, the first resurrection. This is the resurrection of the righteous, the resurrection of the body of Messiah, because it makes no other sense. This is the resurrection right here which happens at the seventh trump. And so, again, what I'm going to present to you is that this last part here that, you just, that I just read regarding the resurrection, when they are resurrected after three and a half days, that syncs up with the seventh trumpet when the wrath is now going to come, okay? Because we see an earthquake here, we see an earthquake here, we see lightnings and voices and thunderings. Where do lightning, voices, and thunderings come from, guys? It comes from the clouds most of the time. And look, the two witnesses, and they ascended 
up into heaven in a cloud. So you see how this chapter is linked? We see that, and at the same hour, so at the same time, there was a great earthquake. And look at the, look at the order here. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake. And then it talks about the 10th part of the city fail. They, okay, and the second pass, the woe is passed, and behold, the third woe come quickly. Well, what is that third woe? The third woe is right here at the seventh trumpet. It's the wrath because we see at the seventh trumpet, he's going to destroy them, which destroy the earth, and he's going to do it with great hail. And notice how the third woe, which is the great, which I'm going to present to you, which is great hail, which we can read about in the seven bowl, uh, the seven bowl and vile judgments that happen in Revelation chapter, that start in Revelation 15. So we see the same order. And this is on the resurrection at the end of the 1,260 days. And going back to that snippet and that clip that I played from my previous video, only a 2,025 Yom Kippur start of the Jubilee will go ahead and meet this scenario. There's only enough time left, three and a half years left, and it looks like for the 1,260 days and the 42 months and the three and a half year tribulation can only happen with a 2025 Yom Kippur Jubilee. So this is the only scenario that can fit it. The other scenario of a 2024 Jubilee, Yom Kippur Jubilee, that doesn't fit because there's like less than three years left as I'm speaking now. But this one supports it, that the Jubilee happens here and then sometime thereafter, this is the year of recompense for Zion. The wrath, the bowl judgment is going to happen on the 70th Jubilee. I believe it's Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The redemption happens. Just like I just shared with you at the seventh trumpet, that is when the vengeance, that's when the wrath is poured out. The seven bowls, the seven vials of wrath is poured out. And it's also the year of his redeemed has come. That is on the year of Jubilee when the redemption happens. And it's also going to be when the vengeance starts, which is the at the seventh trumpet, which is after three and a half years. Now that time period, it's going to, here it is right here, Isaiah 34 verse 8. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, okay, and the year of recompenses, for the controversy of Zion. So there's going to be controversy of Zion. It looks like it's that 42 months that the Gentiles are trampling Jerusalem down. And it's going to be the year of recompenses for Zion. So it looks like that's the Jubilee year of recompenses. So it looks like the seven vials, it could be just a couple of less than two weeks time to finalize and have it finish on the great eighth day. Or it could go a whole year. I haven't gone that far in my studies. I kind of right now, for, for the Euphrates River, River to dry up and for the kings of the east to come over for the great battle, if, if it dries up the day, the first day, uh, on, on the tenth day of the seventh month, that means you can give five days until Sukkot and the Tabernacles, which is the great feast for the birds, which is they're all going to come down and they're going to see Israel dwelling safely with their flocks and their herds sitting under their uh, fig tree, every man under his fig tree, sycamore fig tree and under his vine. And then, so you're going to see restored Israel on the hills of, on, in Israel. And that's when they're going to come for the Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39 invasion at the end there. It possibly looks like which means that if they can get everybody over within like 10 days by the great eighth day they can all be at the valley of Hamagito, which is east of the sea of galilee and that's where that final battle looks like it's going to take place so that should give them plenty of time to come over the for the kings of the east and everybody to assemble right there for the great battle because that's where it's going to be going to take place which probably will happen on the great eighth day is my guess. So just a couple of weeks after this. But it might be a year. It might be a year. A year of recompense. It's the year of Jubilee for Zion. Another type 
of seven trumpets is we see that in Joshua of the Battle of Jericho. When they entered into the land, it was actually a jubilee year of the complete jubilee cycle. I've talked about that in the past, how the first year that they entered in the land was when it started. The first year of the 49-year cycle is actually the 50th year of the previous jubilee cycle. So the first and the 50th year are the same year. They overlap. They overlap. And so when they, that's when the Jubilee count started for Israel. And the next Jubilee coming up is going to be the 70th Jubilee. But when, they, when Joshua and the Israelites came into the Promised Land, the, one of the, after they circumcised themselves and celebrated the Passover, their first battle was the Battle of Jericho. Seven days they circled it. And on the seventh day, they circled it seven times. Seven times seven is a Jubilee. And the priest blew the horn after they circled it seven times. Seven priests blew seven horns. And that horn, the word for horn is Yobel. The horn that they blew in Jericho in the Strongs is Yobel. Which is the same word for Jubilee. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And that's what we're going to see on the 70th Jubilee. At the seventh trump, which is the last trump that the kingdoms of this earth are going to be the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah. So hallelujah. I hope that you're blessed. I hope that you're blessed knowing these things, knowing when, where we're at in time, knowing how close it really is. And I'm signing off and I'll praise the Most High El. Hallelujah. And I'm signing off and shalom to all you brothers and sisters out there, all my brothers and sisters out there, Messiah Yeshua, who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Shalom to you.